Hello guys, welcome to TV Presents Tech View. Another episode. Uh, in this episode, I'll talk about uh, Windows update, Windows patching, and also uh, how you're gonna do that and which tools you wanna use for that. So basically, this video especially uh, for SCCM tools. That means through the SCCM, you will be able to um, patch Windows uh, systems like whatever the Windows operating system you have in your environment, like Windows Server, Windows uh, Workstation, and also uh, like uh, operating system deployment, everything. So SCCM actually is a huge syllabus. It is like, uh, and this video will be a long video, but in this video, I just gonna um, like show you guys how to install and configure SCCM. And then the another video I'll create for just how to administer the SCCM. So that means after installation and configuration, then how day to day you can administer, you can administering the SCCM. That means how you can apply your patch every month to the SCCM. So that's gonna be a separate video. And this video is just installation and configuration. So let's get started. Uh, step by step SCCM uh, 2303 uh, installation guide. That means this is the latest version, latest release from latest is missed the um, like after after this release, there is no new release yet. So how are you gonna check that? So if you search on Google, like say SCCM current branch, that's called a current branch. Um, 2303 release date, and it says, if you can look at here, uh, it's released on 10th April 2023, and 10th April 2023, and support end date. Support end date is 10th October 2024. That means after this date, you're not gonna get any support from the Microsoft, so you have to upgrade your system you have to upgrade your system um you have to upgrade your system well to the latest version so the previous version was 22 11 which was released on december 5 and and uh end of support was 5th june 2024 so the ssm 2303 uh, instruction guide is a bit lengthy um, it will cover like several topics that are important while installing the SSCM uh, setup. So actually, there is no alternative. You have to do all those process. So about the SSCM, I'm not just reading all those things. You can um, I have these documents um, attached, uh, or maybe I want to provide the link in the description box so you can have this um, whole documents. Um, so. The history of the SSCM, that's very important you need to know. So it's been like 30 years SSCM started. So, this, so the first SSCM version name was, uh, name was uh, SMS, Systems Management Server, which is released in 1994, the first one. And then in 2007, it's renamed as a System Center Configuration Manager. And then in 2019, it re again is renamed with Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. So right now, everybody call it SSCM, but actually it's MECM, MECM. So the Configuration Manager current branch, so three updates per year. The current branch, Microsoft released three updates per year, February, June, and October. So now we are installing, um, this is um, May 2024. That means I'm in the middle of this. So after I install it, I have to, in June, I have to apply the update. Um, and then October, I have to apply another update. Stay with, within 18 months of the most recent update version based on the version release date. What does it mean? It means whenever you install it, after that, you're gonna get 18 months to have your current branch version. After 18 months, it's gonna be end of uh, uh, end of support. That means you're not gonna get any support from the Microsoft. 
uh, and you have to look for the new version. You have to look for the new version. So you have to upgrade your system. That's what I explained before. And then SSM architecture. So SSM architecture is like, you can have a multiple server for the SSM or you can have just only one server. But you need also a database for SSM. So SSM server, like you need a huge amount of CPU. You need a huge amount of uh, 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 memories. So, and if you install uh, one server with all roles and also the database, also the WSAS, everything including one server, as a primary site, then it's gonna to be too much load. So it's, that's why it's highly recommended if you have SQL Server Alloyed environment in a separate environment, or maybe a, a standalone SQL Server in a different uh, in a different server, that's highly recommended. So you can connect them, um, the, the, you can connect the database uh, through SCCM, but this is the structure like, Primary site, like if you have only one site, that means say you have one office in Virginia, so you can um, have a primary site. You don't need secondary site if it's not that much huge environment. In that case, you don't need to have it. But one primary site uh, can support 175,000 devices. One primary site, one primary site again can can provide the support 175,000 devices. So it's, the, it's enough. But if you want for the primary side, if you want to have a multiple, um, so for each role in different, different server, that's what you can do, but it's not like, um, it's not highly recommended, but if you want based on your load. Okay, so that means what do you need? You need a primary site server, only one server is enough, and then you need a database server. That's it. And definitely you will have a DNS server and uh, Active Directory, right? So that's what I'm, I'm not, I'm not discussing about the uh, Active Directory and DNS server, because you're supposed to have it if you have an environment. Um, so, I, so for the SCCM, you need it, just only one server, which you, I, I'm calling as a primary site server. And if you have a big environment, like say um, you have another office in Texas and you are trying to have uh, another primary site or, or, or like on the Texas side. So you can have, you can have it in a primary site, Texas. So whatever you have a two primary site, in that case, this is mandatory. Central administration site is mandatory. You have to create a central administration site in Virginia or Texas, whatever, but then, then you have to have some link integration with the central administration side for sync up. And also if you need more, like if you have a more load, more devices, more than this, 175,000 devices, in that case, you can have a secondary side and secondary side will be linked with primary, primary side will link with central administration. Same thing, the Texas office primary side will be linked with central, and secondary side will be linked with primary side. And, and all, all those are uh, clients, servers, or maybe workstation, right? So the central administration site, now I'm breaking down this one, central administration site. What it does, so one central administration site can support up to how many? 825,000, 825,000 client computers. And it can support up to 25 child primary site servers. That means if you have a central administration, you can have 25 primary site like this, like this, like this, 25. So the configuration manager major feature is information collection, hardware inventory, software inventory, software metering, asset intelligence, query and reports, uh, deployments, application updates, uh, endpoint protection, compliance baseline, uh, remote control, all those things. This is the features of configuration manager. 
Now we're going to setting up a lab. So for setting up the lab, if you follow these documents, you will be able to create your own SSCM environment, 100%. Dedicated SSCM server. Okay, so create new two service account. One you're going to create for SSCM and for SQL server. But what kind of um, privileged access you're going to provide? So you should add SSCM admin with the domain as provide the domain admin privilege access or any other uh, delegation and schema admin because through this one we're gonna um, extend the Active Directory schema and SQL Server. Also, uh, you should have like some administrative privilege access. And other some access you need, which is I'm going to show you practically here. So in here, I have a user accounts and standard account service account. So all the service account is here. And so I have SSM admin. I have a SQL Server admin. So here is I have a group like group name, group. So I have multiple groups. So one group name is RDP, one group name is uh, SQL admins, admin, sys admin. So I added both service account on this group, on this group, on this group also. So how are you gonna add it? If you go this one properties, and as a member, you're gonna see who is the member. So for example, this is not, this one is not here. Then how are you gonna add it? And say add. And then you're gonna say SCCM, ADMIN, and check and okay. But this one is already, this one is already exist. This is already exists, right? That's why. And then apply and okay. So this is how I added both service account on RDP, uh, SQL admins, sysadmin. RDP is very important for not only just SCCM, but in other case, if you want to do RDP, if you if you want to establish RDP connection, if you have RDP access to other machine, other remote machine um, through the RDP session, you have to have some privileged access. So that access, RDP access, I have created through the GPU. So I'm going to show you here group user local admin access policy local admin access policy so what the setting is i just created this group policy and then you know like if you go to the edit option then follow this one nothing just under the window set of policy window settings security settings restricted group and other restricted group is a member of system administrator and group is RDP, RDP, because RDP actually is a group name. The group name can be anything, whatever you want. It's not mandatory, you have to have RDP. It can be anything. That's what I added here. Now, and when I have this GPU policy, I don't need to be audited. Like, I don't need to assign my SSM admin to all machines as a local administrator. I don't need to. So automatically if i am i'm going to show you each and every machine in my domain because your sscm needs to be added and supposed to have a rdp access and also as a local admin because it's going to install the tools in all windows machine right that's why so if you go to the computer management Okay, and go to the local user and group, go to the groups, administrators, and you're gonna see the SLB slash RDP. So these groups is added automatically through the GPU. I didn't, you, if you want, you can individually add it here, but if you have a 5,000 machine, 2,000 machine, do you think it is possible? You're gonna go each and every machine, like uh, each and every, every machine, computer management and then do like this, add uh, like add a user, type the username, 
like like for example SCCM, SCCM admin and then check and click OK. See, this one is added here. You're supposed to do this, but I have added this user to the RDP group from the Active Directory side. And then also I apply the GPU policy. Through the GPU policy, RDP group automatically assigned as a local administrator. And if RDP group is assigned as a local administrator, so that means whatever the user belongs to that group, all of them will have access local will have a local access local admin access i'm going to delete this one because it's already here right so this is the process so st step 2 is the same uh, 2303 prerequisite checklist so this is a checklist you can check what kind of version you need and if you want to skip it you can skip it because i have step by step here so step 2 number if you want you can skip it Go to step number three, create the system management container. So that's very important, creating the system management container. So I need to open the ADSI editor. I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I have already ADSI. So on my, my um, uh, Active Directory, you can say ADSI. And if it's not showing here, what are you gonna do? Just go to the start button, go to the uh, control panel, administrative tools, and then you see ADSI editor, just open it. All right. So I have here, whenever you open first time, it's not showing only this one, then you have to click here, then you're gonna get this one and then uh, expand it and then you're gonna get this and then expand it you're gonna get a list here so another system another system actually um, system management okay another system what are you gonna do right click on it okay another system new object then from the object go to the container because you are going to create a container right it's a container click next and then the value, value should be like this one because I have already created system management. Type the, type system management and click next. So it's a, to complete the creation of this object, click finish. But I have already this, I'm going to cancel it. So you're gonna get this one, system management. That's it. System management. That's it. Nothing else. So go to the documents again. You see, I have a picture here. How are you going to do that? Screenshot. So it's, I, only, I only explain this. Okay. So now step number four, grant SSM server permissions on the system management container. SSM server permissions. Now I'm going to my Active Directory, my Active Directory users and computers. And make sure you have a view as an advanced feature. If it is not check mark, then just go and do the check mark. And then open the system and go to the system management and right click on it, delegate control, click next, and then add. So add a computer object. That means your SSM server, site server, right? Your SSM site server. In our case, this is our site server. This is the name. I'm going to just copy the name. And before you paste it here, I'm going to paste it here, right? So before you do that, make sure object type you have you can you have select as a computer object. Now check it. You're gonna get this one. So it's added, click next, and then click on create a custom task to the delegation uh, delegate. And then this folder exists objects of that means it's gonna select all of them, click next, and full control. So when you check the full control, it's gonna be check mark on all the of these two. Click next and finish. And 
refresh it. And if you go now here, system refresh, system management and refresh, it's gonna come up here. You're gonna see later on. So we provide the permission here. So this step is done. Step number four is done. And okay. <clears throat> now, step number five, extending the Active Directory schema. Now you have to extend Active Directory schema. So how are you gonna do that? So you have to have the SCCM installer like uh, current branch. So I have downloaded, I have already downloaded the schema here. Um, sorry, not here in, in my Active Directory machine, SSM installer. So actually uh, you have to, you can download from, you can just type SCCM current branch download and search. You're gonna get the link Microsoft Configuration Manager current branch. Click here and then you see the version 23, just click here, it's gonna be start downloading. So this is how I download it. But after you download, you have to extract the file through uh, WinZip or 7zip or Windows Building, whatever. So after you extract it, it's gonna create a folder like this, cd.retail.ln like this. So inside of this, there is four files. Instead of this, there is four files. So this is how I get it here. So now extend the schema. What do you need to do for the extended? So you have to find out a extadcdsch. Extra dsch and click copy as path. So you have to run the. So where you have to go? Look at the this one, which can be found in. SCCM setup and bin and x64, which is here, right? Um, where from your, from your Active Directory machine. So open it, go to ins go inside of it, and then SSM setup, and then bin, and then x64, and then what the ex extension is? EXT, right? So just type E, then EXTA, this one, right? Extra DSCH, right? Make sure this is the right one, yes. So this file, but how you gonna run the command? So easy way I'm going to show you how you can run this one through uh, CMD. So just open a CMD command prompt, CMD, right click, Run as administrator. Okay, so how are you gonna run this file? So in this one, just hold the shift key from your keyboard and right click on it. And then you see here, copy as path. So path is already copied. And now go to the command prompt and right click, paste it and then hit enter. And you're gonna see successfully extended the Active Directory schema. Successfully extended the Active Directory schema. So it's already extended. So I can close it. And if you look at on the C drive, you gonna see the extended, see, 5, 8, 838, 838. extended all right so now we're gonna <clears throat> do the step number six install web server iis install web server iis prerequisite as a prerequisite so dotnet framework so this is the list just go by the list and install it i'm going to show you step by step how you're going to do that so for this one, I don't have too many, I don't have that much uh, screenshot here, but anyway, I'll show you here. So go to the, your, uh, this is our SSM server, like uh, site server, primary site server, only one server we are managing. So 
we are working with only one server. So what do you need to do to add, like add the features and roles? You have to open the server manager and then add roles and feature, click next, click next, server role. So we are not installing any role here, click next. What we did, like you see here, it's gonna come step by step when you uncheck mark on it. So based on that, you see. So I already installed here because to save the time, it takes a little bit of time and a remote different, uh, differential compression and nothing else here. And something is in the server role, but what, whenever you select the features, it's gonna take you to the another uh, options. But right now it's not showing. It's gonna show you this one, web server. So web server, but it will take you. After you do the selection, select the features and click next, it will take you here. So you have to make sure you have all those uh, selected. You have to make sure you have all those selected. Performance, security, basic authentication, Windows authentication, and .NET framework, all those things are selected. Management tools. Okay, actually I need this, this. So this one was missing. So it's going to be installed shortly. Okay, let me uh, go for the next steps, which is, okay, this is the complete installation. Okay, now install uh, installing Windows WADK and WinP. So you have to install this. This is the requirement. You have to do that. So first of all, download the Windows ADK. Note that you have to download both ADK and P add-on. So I have the link here. How are you going to download it? I'm going to show you. So download the Windows ADK and download the Windows P add-on for the Windows ADK. So both you need to download. If you click here, it's going to start down. It's already downloaded. And if you click here, it's gonna download. So two of them is already downloaded. Why downloaded? It's downloaded on my laptop, but I have to move it to there. So let me take them. <clears throat> it's downloaded to my, my laptop. So I'm going to move these two. I select it and then say um, copy or cut, whatever you want. And then I'm going to move it to my SSM uh, site server. Okay, this also done. So you can put it anywhere um, on a download folder or anywhere, or maybe here. D drive, I have option, I have a space. So I can say ADK. What, what, what was this? WADK and WinP. WADK and WinP. Okay, so I can have here. All right. So now I need to install it. So edit a setup, right click, run as administrator. Yes. Okay. Install the, okay, so just, just the follow the instruction here. Deployment tools, user site management tools, okay. And Windows performance toolkit. So I'm going to change the location E and ten. Okay, ready. Okay. Okay. Click next. Allow Microsoft to collect inside of the Windows kit. Yes. Click next. Accept and now it's by default is selected a lot of things. Uh, actually, we don't need all of those things. This one, this one. Okay, 
we need just these, these three things deployment tools user site migration tool and windows performance toolkit look at here okay so now we can say install and it's gonna take a little bit time all right it's done <clears throat> So close it. Now the second one, WinP. So we're gonna do the same thing in the same place. Click next. Yes, and next, and accept, install. So that's also gonna take a couple of minutes. All right, so um, this one is done. Can close it. Now we can look for the next steps, which is at the SQL Server installation for SCCM. So it's a supported version, but we are going to install 2019. Um, so step number nine, install SQL Server. So actually I have a separate video for how to install the SQL Server, um, but still I'm going to show you here quickly. So this is, my standalone uh, SQL Server uh, machine. So the is, is SQL Server is not installed yet. It's just a uh, Windows uh, Windows machine. It's a Windows Server 2019. Um, you can check here. Win, win bar. It's 2019. And I'm going to install the SQL Server and I have the SQL Server uh, ISO file here on my download. Okay, so download here. I have the SQL Server here. So right click on it and then say mount and open. So it's gonna open. Now you can set it up, right? So set, set up, right click on the setup file, run as administrator, and you can now close this one. You don't need this window anymore. And in the background, when you run it, in the background uh, is working, it's gonna take a little bit time to open the new window for the setup. So you can minimize it. Sometimes it's work, sometimes it's not work. Okay, okay. So now it's asking you, do you want to install it? Yes. Okay. Minimize this one. And seems like nothing happened, but actually it's running on the background. You see, it's coming after a few minutes or a few seconds. So very quickly, I'm going to show you uh, how you're gonna do that. All right. So whenever, whenever you have this window, go to the installation. New SQL Server standalone installation feature and exit installation. Okay, so this window you need you don't need anymore. You can minimize it or you can cross it. I'm just going to minimize it. Another window going to be open shortly. Okay, so specify a free edition. Okay, click next because I I don't have license. Accept the license. You have to accept it. Click next. Okay, I'm not going for update now. Click next. Now it's gonna scan. And this one will take a little bit of time, like maybe two or three minutes. Just wait a little bit. Or maybe less than that. All right, so um, from this window, you can just uh, check mark database engine service, full service, uh, full text, and uh, reporting service is not included here. You have to down, I think, analysis service you don't need. And also from the shared features is just only one time you need it. So you can save the client tools connectivity, uh, records compatibility, client tools SDK. Uh, SQL clients connectivity SDK. That's it, nothing else. And I'm going to put everything on a D drive. You see here I have a, a sorry, E drive. So instead of C, I'm going to put it on E drive. E drive and 
E drive. Click next. All right. So I'm going to install default instance. What is the naming instance? What is the default default instance? Is everything. If you want to know, learn more, you can watch my SQL Server video. Like I have a SQL Server all agent cluster video and also the uh, SQL Server installation video. But in in this for a CCM, I'm going to go for the default instance and click next. All right. So now SQL Server agent. Okay. So we're gonna um, browse. And I, I have already created a service account, uh, which is called SQL admin. Okay, I have a SQL admin group and also SQL admin. So SQL admin, this is a service account. Okay, I'm going to verify through the SQL admin. Sorry here, browse SQL admin. And if you don't know how to create a service account, I have a separate video for that. Watch that video, then you'll be able to know how to create the service account. Service account is just simple as user account. Okay. And now password. Okay, and make sure automatic, automatic. This one you cannot change and this one disable, but make it automatic. And you don't need to do any kind of uh, password for that. And another one is collation. So this one is very, very important. You have to check it. It says SQL Latin one general CP one CI AS. It's, it should be like this. Uh, let me see. So I have the step by step here. General CP one CI. Make sure CP one CI. Okay. Okay. Click next. Okay. So just remember one thing um, for SSM database is recommended to have just only Windows authentication mode, not mix mode. So add a current one and you can add more, which is SQL add mean group. You can add whole group. You can add our SCCM service account, uh, sorry, SCCM service account. Okay. Sorry, why it's not added? Oh yeah, it's added. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> because I logged in this box, the, uh, this database box, actually I logged in as a SSCM, that's why it's installing with the SSCM admin. So add the SQL administrators. SQL, A-D, M-I-N. Click next. Sorry, before you do that, go back. One more thing I need to do. Go back. Data directions. It's, everything is going E, but backup, I want to go. I don't know how many drives I have. Let's see. Okay. So I have also F drive. So I can put the backup on F drive. Click next. Click next. And install. So the installation is taking time. I'm going to pause the video recording and I'll be back whenever it's done.
All right, so uh, SQL Server is installed. So now we need a SQL, uh, what is called? Uh, management, uh, uh, management tools, SQL Server Management Studio. So uh, with 2019, SQL Server Management Studio not installed. When you install the SQL Server, you have to install it separately. So uh, you just need to go to uh, under the installation and then on the from the right side, third options, install SQL Server Management Tools. Click here, it will take you to the well, website. Let's close it. And some letter, okay, just. So I'm going to actually copy the whole, uh, the URL and close the uh, Internet Explorer. I'm, I, uh, I'm going to uh, download through uh, Chrome and just paste the link and hit enter. Now from here, I can download easily. Download the SSMS SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, just go back and then here. Download SQL Server Management Studio. So it's going to be download now. Um, it's not gonna take that long. Just wait a couple of seconds. Okay, I'm going to close this window because uh, my download is coming here very soon. All right, it's done. So I'm going to close. So this is the... Uh, SSMS, right click on it, run as administrator. And SSMS installation will take a little bit time. I will guide you through step by step. Okay, so it will go C drive or whatever, I, I don't care. Just so you can see install. So now we are here. SQL Server Management Studio installation. All right, so just wait a little bit. It's working. Actually, I can take this screenshot. That's more better than before. This one, okay. This is more makes sense, right? As a screenshot. So it shows it's working, working in progress. All right. All right, so uh, SQL Server Management Studios, Instruction is completed. We can close out. And now I'm going to open SQL Server 2019 uh, Configuration Manager. Make sure everything is running. And also network configuration, the protocol. And you see the name pipe is disabled. Make sure this is enabled. So here you said yes, apply. And okay, so now when you change it, you have to restart the SQL Server services. 
So right click on it and you can say restart. So everything is enabled and everything is running. Now I, I'm going to open the S, um, SSMS. SQL Server Management Studio. Version 20.1 is the latest version. In time, what we can do on the um, primary site server, because our next step is to install the WSS role, right? So what we can do, add a role, click next, click next, click next, and then Windows Server Update Service. Check mark on it, add feature, click next, and next, next. In here, we need WSS service and SQL Server connectivity because we're gonna use the SQL Server. So we have to wait for the SQL Server to be online. Okay, it's already open. So we can log into the database machine. Make sure our database machine is working properly. SQL Server Manager Studio take a long time to load it. So our database server, let's check how much memory it has. So the database server has uh, eight CPU and 32 gigabyte of memory. Because the reason we check, we're going to distribute it here. Let's go uh, browse more options and data like select the database from here and also the, from the option connection. Uh, so everything was default and then go back to the options and just connect. It's connected. So, database security, if you go to the security logins, you're going to see which user has a login capability. SSM admin has a login capability, SQL admin has a login capability, SQL admin group has a login capability. And whoever the users is belongs to this group, they will have um, privileged access to login to this management studio on this data, uh, data instance. Now, what are you gonna do? We're gonna use this database so I'm just going to copy the database instance name. So I'm going to set up WSS here uh, on my um, SSCM primary site server. So I'm going to install the role. So when I install the role, it's asking me what kind of database. Is a WID connectivity that is a, it's a local database for WSS? And this is a SQL server. So click next. Now you have to provide a path for it. So I can say, I can create a folder here um, on the E drive. I have a different, different drive. So in the E drive, I can say folder, I can say WSS underscore updates. Okay, I'm going to copy this, uh, this one and paste it here, click next. And now, specify the uh, database connection. So the database connection means your instance name. So instance names, uh, FQDN of this instance name, server.pls.com. Check connection, so successfully connected to the server, right? To server, so you click next and check mark on restart, yes, and install. So it's going to take a little bit of time. All right, so um, WSS server role is installed. So you can close it. After you close, you're going to see immediately there is a notification flag. So click here and you see launch post installation task. So click here and then you're going to see the activities. Configuration required for Windows server update services at this. Now, it's not going to take that long, so just wait a little bit. Okay, in the meantime, actually, you can do something else. Something else means on the database server, go to the computer management, 
go to the computer management and go to the groups administrators and add the primary site server computer object here okay so primary site server is this one right so i'm going to just copy the name here check and okay reply okay that's it okay you see here infrastructure so this is implement by GPO. If you look, I go here, I have a GPO policy. I'm going to open the GPO policy here. So group RDB access as a local admin. Okay, details, settings. So I have created a GPO policy, you see here, um, LS infrastructure is a group name, infrastructure is a group name and member of a building administrator. So this one will give you the options to do the RDP on each and every Windows machine as a local administrator. So whoever is a member of this group, that group, uh, these, the, these groups, infrastructure groups, that user will have access to do the RDP on any machine. So uh, in our SCCM admin, we added SCCM admin to this group. So the SCCM admin is a member of this group. So that means SCCM admin has um, um, privileged access to do the RDP on e any machine. Any machine means uh, whatever the machines is linked with this GPU. So this is the GPU settings and I believe I don't need to explain it. If you want to create these types of um, I have a separate video for that. And also you can follow these uh, settings. So this is one thing. And on the system DB, okay. I need to do one more things, which is, uh, sorry, this is the database, right? So I need to set up the database, right click on it, go to the properties. I need to set up the memory limit. In here, you see it says something terabyte. So it's recommended eight megabyte to the minimum server memory is eight, uh, sorry, eight, oh, it's in megabyte. Yeah, eight, eight gigabyte. I'm going to convert it to megabyte. So cal So one zero two four times eight, which is eight one nine two, right? So eight one nine two, and maximum in this machine we have thirty two gigabyte. So I cannot utilize all thirty two. I have to keep some for my Windows operating system, right? So that means uh, what I can do out of thirty two, if I deduct four, that means it's twenty eight. Right, so 28 gigabyte max I can use for database. So 10 uh, 1024 times 28 that's it. So this is for the database site setup. And in here, you see, uh, this is also done. And what else we need to do here? Um, actually, I'm copying the SSM uh, current branch software, SSM install, inst installer. Anyway, um, in here, we need to do one more thing, which is we install the WSS, right? So go to the IIS, IS. If you don't find like this, you can get it from here. Uh, just do tools, IIS, expand it. 
than application pool, you're going to see the WSS pool. So the WSS pool, okay, not like this. Right click on it. Um, advanced setting. You see here Q, uh, Q, Q length, right? So it's 1000, make it 2000. And then private memory limit, make it uh, so. One eight four three two hundred, right? Okay, so make it four times. So that means times four. So assign this value. So I'm going to assign this value here seven three seven two eight hundred. Now, if you can look at here, same, right? So click OK, and that's it. You can close it. And um, this one is already set it up. This one is already set up. So I'm going to. So installer is here. Uh, how I get this installer? Actually, uh, when you download it, if you go to the download, say, uh, as CCM, SCCM, um, run branch download Microsoft Construction Manager branch current branch download. It will take you to the latest version. See, twenty three oh three. So just click here. Immediately, it's going to be start downloading. This here, 1.2 gigabyte. It will take two minutes. I'll, I'll show you after you download how the icon going to be look like. And then from there, you have to extract. So you have to create some folder. I created the folder like E and then extract it to this folder. So when you extract it, it's going to be create this folder. And under uh, uh, like inside of this, there is a four file, uh, four, three folder and one file look like this. All right. So we have um, done with all the SQL stops, like we are done. Now, what are you going to do? We're going to configure the firewall settings for SCCM 2023. So SCCM firewall port inbound, we have to open for all those um, SSM firewall port. So we're gonna open this one through GPO. So GPO is more easier. You can you can uh, go directly. You can go directly to um, to the database server and SSM server, like well, primary site server separately and go to the control panel and go to like a uh, file port and you can create a menu. So, but that's the long process. Long process means you have to create multiple times in different, different server, but I'm not going to do that. I want to create a GPO. So from through the GPO, you can see here, SSM file port I have already here, but I'm going to modify this. So I allowed this the local port so it is so how are you going to create the gpu it's pretty simple pretty easy you know i i believe you guys already know so right click on it create a gpu uh no not here actually not here not here not here so go to the uh group policy and then right click on it new and then type a gpu name whatever you want so for example this is the GP, your gpu name you just create a new one uh, say for example, uh, for, for SSM file port, right? Right click on it. Then after that, after you create the GPU, it's nothing inside. So you have to go to, you have to provide some settings, right? So you have to go to edit and then expand it, policy, windows, windows settings, and then Security policy, 
and then you're going to see here windows inbound so this inbound policy already created right so i'm going to delete it i'll show you how you can create a new one i'm going to delete the outbound this one also okay right click on it new rules and then port next uh, tcp and what what's the tcp port specific port so um based on our documents i'm going to copy all of them and paste it here click next all i allowed all allow the connection for domain private and public click next and provide the name so what should be the name the name should be the name should be um sccm for all course hyphen inbound inbound uh, okay and finish so now we're going to create the new rules for outbound the same process port next Press all the port here, next. Allow connection, next. Next. Press CCM, roll, ports, outbound. And finish. Okay, so for the port we already created. Now we're gonna do the for file share and WMI. For the file share, that means file and printer sharing inbound, file and printer sharing outbound, WMI inbound, WMI outbound. So I'm going to create that policy also. So this is done. And so how we're gonna create it? You just provide the name right click on it new and provide say sscm file policy for the file and printer sharing inbound or or inbound outbound together whatever right so i have already created here you see but i'm going to show you how you're going to do that right click on it go to the edit uh the same thing just maximize uh, max, uh, maximize it and expand it a little bit policy Windows setting and then security settings, Windows firewall, inbound and outbound both we I have right. So if I don't want right, I'm just going to show you I'm not going to implement it. New row, how are you gonna do that? So right, right click on it, and then you're gonna say. Predefined. So, which service? See, file and printer sharing. Click next and select all of them. Select all of them. Click next. And then click next. And allow connection and finish but i didn't select um, it should select all of them and by by default maybe it's going to be selected and then next and finish but i have already that's why i'm not going to do that so same thing you want to do for outbound and this one is for management instrumentation which is wmi and so same way edit gpo uh just expand it policy windows settings then security settings then the uh, windows firewall and windows inbound outbound both right inbound new rule and then i'm going to do the same thing so predefined select and you can scroll down you see the wmi click next you're going to see so 
uh, because I have already selected that's why it's not I have already created that's why it's, it's unchecked so but it's gonna be checked automatically you can say next next it's already exist next next and then done so it's for uh, inbound and then outbound you're gonna do same thing right click new role preferred and then go all the way down here click next you're gonna see and check mark on it or it's gonna be check mark automatically you can say next and and finish so that's how you're gonna clear so after you create the gpo policy how you're gonna apply it so i link it on top i link it on top of the computer object here uh on the server on top of the server that means if i have a 500 server all of the gpo policy will be applied to the all 500 server and i'm going to close this one and from here you see actually um where we left for the ssm okay yes yeah. okay so you see here when i provided my database name when we install the wsus when we install the sorry uh, when we install the wsus feature you see the wsus already installed through the sql so it's installed to the database you see here it's, it's created a su sus dv is it is it's a by default is created a this database for wsus so now uh prerequisite wise everything we did so one thing i uh, forget to tell you like which is after applying the gpo so uh, we applied the gpo on these two machines right but we didn't um you need to run two commands to get the updates because otherwise it's going to take two hours to apply on the server. Go to the CMD and type, say, uh, GP update slash force. And same thing do here. Yes, I'm going to minimize this one, minimize this one. CMD run as administrator. And gp update slash force so make sure you see this is applied and run one more time so the computer policy is updated and then run one more time just to make sure okay this one uh, i ran twice is done and then here one time is done so second time is done so twice I already run twice and I close it. So GPU, the group policy is applied. That means the file port is allowed now. So based on this, all the prerequisites we already met. So based on our documents, uh, we are in step number 14. Now the step number 14 is download the SSCM baseline and install it. So we already downloaded. I already show you guys here like uh download this one so if you look at on the download folder you're gonna see this is the download it's a current uh, configuration manager current branch download so the current branch download is already downloaded and what do you need to do you just need to uh, extract so it's going to be extract the file to a folder so it's working on it i, I just want to show you the steps nothing else because I have already extracted. The file is on my e, uh, data E drive. So when you extract it, then, okay. When they are self-extracting, so it is self-extracting, that means it's built in here. So you can just need to browse and your folder. Say for example, I had put in uh, here, right? Installer and click okay and extract, then it's gonna be extract there. So I already did it, so. All right, so we are ready, right? So on the primary side server, I just ran a command uh, on the CMD. I just ran a command, GP result space slash R space slash scope space computer. And it will show you like whatever the GPU is applied or not applied. So it, it shows how many GPUs is applied. So it's applied group policy object, SMB share files, Local admin password reset, SSCM file. So 
uh, my target is to verify these three. So these three is already applied. And also it shows the uh, local administrator uh, security groups properties here. So this one is added. And also in here, we can check the same thing. Right click on it. Yes. So I just gonna copy, the, uh, I just gonna copy the um, man. Okay. And here, so it will show you everything. Okay. That's also have the same kind of policy and also the uh, SSCM DB, okay. Make sure on the local in here, uh, computer management. On the database server, computer management, object groups, administrator, make sure the SSCM um, primary site server is allowed as a local administrator here. Computer object, maybe it's a computer object, it's not a user account or groups, it's a computer object. Okay, so everything looks good. Um, so now we can start, now we can start. I'm going to minimize everything. And I, so for is our installation file? Here, right, we extract it here. So just splash, double click on it. I'm going to minimize this window and install exe next next install the evolution version because I don't have the license and you have to accept so download record files so actually i ran this one before and that time i used download record file if you first time running just select this one and also create a folder the way i created if you can look at here on my e drive uh, i have created a folder name sscm hyphen prerequisite hyphen file so whatever the name you want you can put it it doesn't matter it's not like mandatory you have to have the same name so Whenever you have a name, a, fo a folder, so just copy the folder path and put it here. So, and then click next. It's gonna be download from, it's gonna be download files, prerequisite files from internet, and then it's gonna put it on this folder. But in my case, I have already, so I'm gonna use the previously, this one, this link, and the location, click next. So now it's gonna show only 13 file, right? But if I select this one, it's gonna be 52 file. So it's not gonna take that long because I have all of the files is already there. 52 files. It's just very fine. I have already the files. Okay. So it's done. We, I just need to wait a little bit and it will give you the another window. You can see it's Virginia site, right? So BAS, BAS Virginia site. And everything is gonna be default and make make sure you have a check mark. By default, it has a check mark. Don't take it out because you need a configuration manager console. Click next, oh, sorry, site name. So site name, you can say ELS primary hyphen site. Okay, so join the primary site to an existing hierarchy or install a standalone, do for the standalone site because I am not planned for central administration. I don't have like two primary site. I just only have one primary site one server, right? Click next, yes. And then it's asking you about that database. So what is the database? This is my database, right? This is my database. 
So put here database name. You can type it or you can just do the way I'm doing. And this is the database default name. If you want, you can change it, but I'm not going to change. Click next. And it shows the database uh, drive location on this computer. So that's what it's showing. You can just simply say next. And especially the SMS provider, SMS provider means uh, my primary site server is the SMS provider server. So click next. In here is very important. Go with the configure the communication method on each side system role. This one. Don't go with the HTTPS because if you go with the HTTPS, that means you have to have a, a certificate authority server and also a certificate needs to be assigned to all the clients to be communicated. So that's what I'm going with HTTP. Second option, click next. And install management point, yes, obviously. And distribution point, yes, on, on the same server. Click next and next. And yes, it gets connected. That means it's gonna connect with the Microsoft to get the SCCM updates. So that means if SCCM um, bench, uh, um, what is called? The SCCM software, If the if Microsoft is any SSM software, so uh, you can see the update and you can apply the updates, the version updates. Okay, so click next, next. So it's checking the prerequisite. So warning is fine. You can so you can resolve the warning, and all right, it's completed. So the check is completed. I have like four warning. That's fine. I can go for begin installation. So begin install, and this one will take time. Sometimes it takes two hours, or sometimes it takes less than two hours. It depends on your server performance and also your speed. So I'm going to pause the uh, video recording here and I'll be back whenever it's done. All right, so the Microsoft Configuration Manager installation is completed. Uh, it takes about one hour, 15 minutes, 42 seconds. I just hit close and then, then I open System Center Configuration Manager from the Start button from here, or you can have it here also. So you can just click and then it's gonna be open like this. So the installation is just completed. Now what we have to do, we have to do some, um, what is called, post configuration. So after you install, you have to do post configuration. Um, so the post configuration uh, is SSM Active Directory Discovery. First, we have to do the some discovery stuff. So Active Directory Discovery. So all right, so we're gonna now click on administration. So like it has a software library, asset com compliance, monitoring, administration. So the first thing when after you install, you should do some configuration on the under the administration tab. So if whenever you click the administration, and on top, you're gonna to see it's change, like monitoring, if you click monitoring, it's change, right? So I'm going to go administration, and then uh, under the hierarchy, um, hierarchy configuration, if you expand it, you're gonna see the discovery method, boundaries, boundary group. So the first thing is you have to configure the discovery method. So here is some discovery method, like a forest discovery, group discovery, system discovery, user discovery and um, heartbeat discovery and network discovery. So most of them is like, like except heartbeat, everything is disabled, right? So we have to enable it. So let's get started with the first one, forest discovery. Right click on it and go to the properties, 
and then enable Active Directory Forest Discovery. And it's a bi-weekly. So if um, your environment is not that much busy, that means it's not that much big, you can leave it with week. But if it's too big, in that case, maybe you, you don't know like uh, which system admin is creating a machine or adding users. Or, so in that case, you need to maybe discover uh, every day, but you can you can leave it for a week also. It's up to you and depends on your environment. So I'm leaving with one week. And nothing else here, apply. Yes. And okay. So it's enable and then uh, Active Directory Group Discovery, go to the properties and then enable. And when you enable it, add it as a location because you have to select the location for your group discovery. So click location and then in here, you need to provide your Active Directory. So in, in domain controller, in my case, uh, this is my domain controller. So if I can, oh, sorry, what is the name? So I can provide the name here because this is a group discovery, right? I can say group, Eddie group or something you can say, um, Eddie group, Eddie groups. And in here you can browse Let's see one thing, name. Okay, so actually not the group, you have to provide your domain controller. Then you're gonna get the domain main domain controller, your uh, your domain. So it shows my domain here. And then uh, select which group you want. So I have a sp specific group here. I don't have any other group, but if you have groups folder here, groups folder here, like in a multiple container, you have groups. In that case, just select the domain, that's it. You can do it like this. But in my case, I'm not going to, going to do this because I know I have all groups in under this uh, container, this OU, so I can select this one. And everything else will be default. Click OK. Pulling schedule. So the schedule is a uh, full discovery pulling schedule occurs every seven days, every seven days at 12 a.m. midnight. Default discovery, default discovery interval minutes, five minutes. So everything I'm leaving default. And in here only discover computer have that logged in the domain given period of time, 90 days. And so if you want, you can check mark. So I'm going to leave it um, as default. Apply, yes, and okay. So enable the groups and now system discovery. Right click on it, go to the properties, enable it, and then click here. And in the path, you can just provide the domain controller then again go to the browse option. So when you click on browse, it's gonna show you um domain so you can select your domain then you all uh <clears throat> all container or all uh oh you're going to be added but i know where my computer is so in that case i can select individually but if you have a multiple like multiple computer object container so in in my case i have actually new computer object um computer objects computers, domain controllers separately, right? So so I have a multiple container with co computer objects. So in that case, I can select my domain. And this one is by default. Nothing else you need to do, just click okay. And apply, yes, and okay. And Active Directory users discovery. So right click on it, go to the properties. Enable, click here, 
and provide your domain controller name, go to the browse option. And so if you have a multiple um, container, multiple or use, have the users, in that case, you can select the, your domain. But in my case, I know I have all users is under user account because I have a multiple sub uh, OU here. So if I select the parent uh, container or parent OU, everything is going to be added. So click OK. <clears throat> and then click OK. And apply. Yes. And OK. And heartbeat is already enabled. And I'm not going to work with network discovery. Uh, network discovery is going to work only when uh, you have any machine which is not joined with the domain. In that time, it's work. This one is work. So I can uh, like enable it later on. So that's it for uh, discovery method. So after you configure it, if you want to run the discovery, so you can just select the discovery method and say run. What is discovery now? Yes, because the first discovery was selected. And then select this one, run discovery now. Yes, this one, you can say run discovery now. Yes, select this one, say discovery now. Yes. So if you go to the asset and com compliance, now you're gonna see the user, all active users is here now. Devices, if you click the device, it's gonna show you all the devices, whatever you have on your active directory. All the devices is here. Then user collection, device collection. So it's gonna be update all system. You see now it's 23. So from there you can uh, create a, your um, create device collection. That means customized collection you can create. So I'll show you these options later on. And then now the, so now uh, creating boundary and boundary group. So the boundary and boundary group means you can create a boundary by IP address. Uh, I, I can show you here if you click right click and create a new boundary. So you have option to with subnet, activity side, um, IP address range, uh, VPN or maybe IPv6. It's up to you. So if it is subnet, then you can provide. So if you have a multiple subnet, you can add all multiple subnet by adding like this, let's say for example, 10.15.75, um, sorry, it's, it, you can you can have a name, name is anything you can you want. So you can say, um, what the billion name is, say for example, Virginia, um, uh, like say 45 or something. So, you can say 172.16.45.0, but I don't have this subnet, I'm just giving an example. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0, and then apply and okay. So this is way, uh, this way I created total these three, and if you want to create a boundary group, so how are you gonna create a boundary group? Right click on it, create a boundary group, and then you can say, okay, um, IP subnet GRO UP group, and then you can say add, and you're gonna see all three here. And if you have a, like 50, you're gonna select all 50, and click okay, you can put it in one group, or maybe you can have a different different group, and apply an okay. So actually, I'm not going to do the, with the IP right now, and that's why I'm going to actually delete all of them. To delete all of them, I just show you if you need, you can do it like this way for the IP subnet. So I'm going, so what is the groups? Groups is a collection of boundaries. The boundary groups is a collection of boundaries. So I'm gonna create a boundary for, so the description is AD site boundary.
and it's going to be Active Directory site. And now Active Directory site name. Okay, so the site name is because when we created our Active Directory, uh, that times it's, it's provided default name, which is default for site name. But if you change it, then you can select, you use like whatever the customized one. So in, in, our, in our case, if this is a default site name, it's fine. Click OK and ap apply and OK. So the boundary group, right click on the boundary group, create a boundary group, but I don't have too many sites. In that case, you can say um, AD Dory group and add. So it's just only one, right? So select that one, okay, and apply, and okay. So we added our boundary group, okay. But actually reference, there is, if there is a reference, go to the reference, add. Now add the, add our SCCM primary site server. Click here, click okay as a reference and apply and okay. Oh, sorry, what I, what I did it. Actually I did on the wrong one. Anyway, I can do it here too. And go to the properties, reference, use one side, right? Add this one, okay. And apply and okay. Again, let me check another options like the relationship one, the other tab. Relationship, fallback relationship, specify the fallback relationship that you would like to, like this boundary group to have with others by adding a boundary group to the list below if required. You can add it as a, this one. So I'm going, I'm, I'm not going to do this relationship now. Everything else I'm just leaving as default. So what I change only the reference, click okay. All right. So the boundary, boundary groups, everything is uh, set up. Now what else I need to do? Maybe my site and site configuration. Okay, side. Now we're gonna talk about actually. So this is done. SSM client installation automatic. How are you gonna automatically install the SSM client? So if you look at here on the administration side, then, then uh, right click client food installation. And then you can enable automatic update on the account. You can browse, you can select the, okay. We're gonna do this one practically. So we're gonna do a step by step. We're gonna follow this instruction. So what do you need to do? Select the site and then this is our primary site, right? Right click on it and then client installation settings, client push installation, and then enable automatic side-wide client push installation. And on the installation manager clients on the domain controller, no, you don't need to do actually. Connection manager side system. Install the configuration manager client software on the following computer, servers, workstation, you can select all of them. And then account, add the account, new account and username, go to the browse option. So we're gonna add our SCCM service account as CCM, ADMIN, SCCM admin, check it and click okay. And the password for that one, because through this account, we're going to install the software.
ठीक है सो वेरिफिकेशन नेटवर्क शेयर सो वन ऑफ द सर्वर्स इन यू वन ऑफ द सर्वर्स सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल से डब्ल्यू एस आई हैव वन सर्वर हियर सो वट इज द आई पी एड्रेस ऑफ दिस सर्वर इज वन एंड टू डॉट वन सिक्सटी एट वन डॉट सिक्सटी टू राइट सो ऑन देर सी ड्राइव लेट सी इफ आई एम एबल टू एक्सेस दिस वन वन नाइन टू डॉट वन सिक्सटी एट डॉट वन डॉट सिक्सटी टू और सिक्सटी टू Yes, sixty-two, sixty-two slash C dollar sign and test connection. So the con the connection was successfully verified. That means through this account, I will be able to install the to uh, like uh, client as in to any machine. So click OK. And apply. And okay, so what we did so far, we did this one, we did this one, we added, we test the connections, right? Now click on asset and compliance, asset on compliance, and we're gonna test it. So now let's check, go to the asset and compliance, and the device uh, devices. So multiple, multiple, uh, multiple. Um, so you can just, con if you can press the control button and then you can click. So you can have a multiple machine and then right click on it. You can say install client. So that means automatically you can install the uh, software. But we're gonna we're gonna test one of the server which is WSS. Let's see this one because this one is now available for us. I'm I'm just going to test on this machine. Right click on it. Then install the client. Click next. Allow this and also this. But for this one right now I don't need it. I can say this one primary side. I know this is not a domain control, that's why I'm not, I'm not selecting this one. When a computer already has a configuration manager client installed, you can repair. So I'm not selecting this one because I know this is first time. So I just select this one and click next and close. So now you need to check on the SCCM server. Um, I'm the installer maybe set up tools. You can see CCM trace. If you copy this one and the W SAS, just paste it here and open the W SAS. Under Windows, you're gonna see CCM setup is here because I already push it. That's why this folder is created under Windows. So if you double click on it, continue, and you're gonna see here. Here's the log. So we're gonna trace this one. Run as administrator. This one, yes. File open and then go to the this computer C drive Windows and then CCM setup logs this one. So in here you're gonna see the activities. The installation activities, you're gonna look at here. So right, so uh let's do Another configuration, which is the client settings configuration, because sometimes for these settings, because it's a by default settings, uh, we need to do some configuration on the client settings. 
So I'm going to go step by step. How we can actually do that, which is like um, from the administ administration. If you go to client settings, and you're going to see the default client settings here. Create custom clients. Uh, create custom client device settings. You can create a custom one if you want. Or you can do on the um, default one. So you can say custom uh, client settings for all computers. And then um, you can check client settings, client priority, and um, computer agent. Computer restart. Sorry, I'll... and then uh, you can do the remote management. Remote, remote tools actually, remote tools, software center, software deployment, software inventory, software metering, like all, all of them. So we just go to the properties, okay? So for the client cache setting, the first option the, for the client cache setting, um, <clears throat> The size is yes, and then it's uh, 5120 megabyte. So make it double. Like I said, actually 5 gigabyte, make it 10 gigabyte. It's going to be 10240, 10240. And nothing else in here. Go for the client policy. And the client policy, uh, client policy pulling interval minutes. So you can uh, change it if you want to uh, specify how client computer retrieve the policy. So the client gonna be retrieve the policy every hour, like 60 minutes. So if you want, you can make it like every 10 minutes or, or like every 30 minutes, it's up to you. Computer isn't. So for the agent setting, actually everything gonna be um, computer agent deployment deadline. So the only one thing which is PowerShell uh, execution policy, you can say bypass, nothing else. And then computer restart. So the computer restart specify the time. So after the deadline, you can say 15 minutes. This one is 10 minutes. And this one maybe five minutes. And when the deployment uh, requires a restart, show a dialog window to the user, user instead of a loss connect, uh, like instead of a to a notification. So if, if you click it, yes, that means it's going to show the notification. And that's it. And for the remote tools, remote tools, configure settings, configure settings, and then enable it. And for domain, private, and public, click OK. And then set view. Click here, user or group name, user or group name. So uh, for example, infrastructure. So our SSM admin is a group, a group member of SSM um, infrastructure. So I can say as a group. Um, Infrastructure is a group name. 
click OK. User can change policy, allow remote control. Unrendered computer, yes. From the remote control, yes. Permissions to the transfer content for shared clipboard. Okay. So that's it for here, software center. So for the software center, select this one as yes and customize. So in here, if you want to write something, the company name, for example, um, say tech, tech view. And if you want to change the color, you can do the color change. It's up to you. And uncheck this one. Hide and install application in software center. Uncheck it. <clears throat> and that's it for this one. Click OK. Again, go to the customization tab. All right, nothing here. And then software deployment. Software deployment schedule. So this schedule is like a custom schedule. Occurs every seven days effect from this to this. And you can say simple schedule run every seven days. Software deployment. You can say every schedule re evaluation or re evaluation for deployments. Software deployments. One day or like or seven days is fine. Software inventory. So the software inventory, same thing. You can do the schedule, seven days, or if you want, you can change the days. Um, you can say every day. Then everything else is fine, metering. So for the software metering, yes, and schedule, simple schedule, every day you can say every one days or seven days. So the reason I'm changing uh, it to one day is because I want to get uh, like quick updates. Software now, software updates. The software updates um, schedule. Scan, scan schedule so you can change it or so you can do it for one day. Okay. And schedule deployment relation. So you can say one day. And Enable management of the Office 365. Fine Yes. State messaging. And Affinity is it's fine. This is hundred twenty and ten. That's it. Nothing else. Click OK. All right. Refresh. The default one. All right, so uh, in the system, actually, uh, we try to install uh, to the install client process. And it wasn't successful, like every time we get issues. 
So that's why I just removed it. Okay. So um, we're gonna try with GPU policy. So to the group policy, how you're gonna deploy, right? So that's what we're gonna look at right now. So on the SCCM, um, you need to do nothing. You have to go to your domain controller. But before you go to your domain controller, you have to, uh, so you have to deploy the tools, right? So you have to keep that tools in a shared drive. It can be on your domain controller. It can be on your any other server or maybe the SCCM um, uh, primary server, whatever you want. But in my case, I put it on my um, domain controller, but it's not mandatory you have to have there. So what do you need to do actually? So what I, I did, so I open a folder, uh, just give me a second, let me show you. So this is my domain controller on the domain controller. I have a e, uh, e drive on the E drive. I have a software folder and then I created a folder name CCM setup. So what I did here, the software folder, I just uh, go to the properties and then I just say share and advanced sharing and then uh, permissions. So every one permission, just don't do the full control, just do the only the read and apply. Okay, that's it. So it's my share folder. So after, in, instead of so, uh, software, I have multiple types of software, but now I'm working with the SCM setup. So I create a folder SCM setup and it was empty before. How I get this one? So it was like this. How I get this one? So if you look at here, uh, just run, then go to the run options and then double slash type your SCM uh, primary site server name and hit OK or enter then it will take you to the SSM server, okay? And on the SSM server, if you go to the SMS, uh, BAS is my site name, and then go to the tools, and then, oh, sorry, it's not on the tools. Um, it's on bean, and then I386, and then SSM setup.msi. So just right click on it, Copy and just paste it here. So this is how I get it here, right? Okay. So now I have the software in the shared drive, SSM setup .msi, msi file. So now we I need to create a GPU policy. So on the GPU policy, what I did, I just right click on it, new, and then I provide the name. So what I provide the name, so I, I, I named it SCCM client as in deployment. So after I created this one, I, ha I have to go to the edit option, right? So I have to go to edit and then uh, policy, administrative templates, and then on the administrative I added add remove template. So add remove template right now it shows here. Say for example, this is not here. Just remove it, close. If you remove it, okay. So how I added here, I said add remove templates and I said add it, but how are you gonna get it? So same thing, go to the run, run and type your SSM primary site server with the double slash, go okay. And then it will take you to there and go to the SMS underscore VS. VS is means my uh, site code, in your case, maybe your site code should be different. So click on it and then go to the tools and configure uh, ADM template. And you see there's the two files, right? So just copy the whole path and then I'm going to close it. And in here, now I'm gonna paste that path and click here and then select both of them and open. So now it's here, right? And close it. So when you close it and then it's here, classic administrative template, right? So classic administrative template, just expand it. So classic administrative template, ADM was not there before. After we added it, it's created here. So expand it, 
and then config configuration manager client. So the first one config uh, configure configuration manager site client assignment in here. Uh, your site code, but in my case, my site code is VAS Virginia site. That's why I said VAS. But in your case, maybe it can be different. So whatever your site code, just put it here. And site assignment retrieval, it by default it was uh, I think um, sixty minutes. I make it thirty minutes. And this one was eight hours or something. Two hours, twelve hours. I just made it for two hours. It's up to you. And click OK. And then this one, this one enable and also do the enable and run this command, which is uh, when, so I'm, I'm going to show you this in here. So like this, SCCM setup.exe space slash MP equals to your um SSM primary site server fully qualified domain name right ELS.com and then SMS uh, SMS site code which is your, your site code my site code is VAS so just I just copied the whole thing and I just paste it here look at here same thing right and click OK so it's enabled And now go to the software. So our software side, actually, I, I'm going to delete this one. Oh. Software package, okay. So software and software package, right? Because I already assigned it, that's why it's showing here. Task, remove. Okay. Right click on it, new package. And then where is the packages? On your share folder, right? Whatever the share file is. So in my case is in my DC. So I can go here. My DC means this computer here, software. If you right click on it, a software and under here, right? So as the same setup, go to the properties. And the share, so you see the share path is here. Just copy, copy the path, and then provide the path here. So you're gonna see MSI. Yeah, this one, right? And it's assign. All right, this set. And now you need to do another two settings. Go to the system, logon, and always wait for the network computer logon. Just enable it and click OK. And on the group policy, specify setup policy processing wait time. Enable it. And it was like it was before 60 seconds. Let me just make it 30 seconds and click OK. And that's it. So after you, so it's, it's done, right? right? So the configuration is done. The GPU is done. Now you need to link the GPU. So I link it on the way top. Because I want to apply the, uh, the I want to deploy the agent to all of my computers. That's why, it, uh, like, link it on my domain level. Um, so link the GPO and then I just select the GPO. So it's already selected. That's why um, you see here, and also I make it enforce so that is going to be on top. If you look at here, simple line agent deployment. Okay. So, so now what I can do, I'm just going to uh, run some GP update command, GP update slash force. But before I do that, I want to I want to um, refresh the policy and in here, so force hit enter, 
And in the meantime, I can go file open and check this SSCM logs. Okay, so this one is looking for restart, okay? Yes. Restarting the computer after the restart, I will check the, we, we can trace the log. I'm going to close all of all the connections or maybe we can restart from here too. All right. Now, so we completed the GPU policy for uh, as in deployment. So everything on the documents. Now I want to show you another thing, which is uh, how you can add your WSL server. So now we will do software update points as UP installation for update deployments to client computers. It, it means that you're gonna configure a software update points for the SCCM and you're gonna link WSLs. So how you do that? So we're gonna look for a step-by-step. Step. Um, so from your, uh, sorry, administration, administration, and then site, um, site configuration, then site, and then in here, right-click on it, Add a site system role. All right. So in here, you don't need to do anything. Just click next. Uh oh, sorry. Name server one of the voice, not here. Okay. So it's supposed to be come automatically like this, but I don't know some uh, directory forest. Okay. It's supposed to be come like this. Click next. Proxy, you don't need to do anything. And then in here, you need to select the software update points, SUP, because we are going to configure this one, right? Click next. Software update points. So WSUS configuration, WSUS is configured to use port 8530 and this, right? So by default, it's selected. So by default is selected, I don't need to do anything. So whatever the default one, just leave default one. Basically we need this one, just this. So it's already selected. And then from the next the proxy, we don't have any proxy. Click next. Synchronize from Microsoft updates. That means um, SCCM will download the patch from the Microsoft, it's, it's gonna be um, like is you know, like SSM will be synchronized with the Microsoft. That's why it's going synchronize with the Microsoft update directly. And in here, synchronize update. Nothing else you need to do. Just click next. And then this screen enables synchronization on the schedule. So I want actually every day. Every day. Or oh, customize, customize. Actually, let's see what I have on the customize. Okay. So the customize, I think I should go for the customize one every day and what time say for example um 
وانام and a lot when sequence fails on any side hierarchy check mark on it click next now superseded superseded just select this one and select this one immediately expire suspended feature update so if something is like old you don't need to like keep it if you say do not expire that means it's going to be keep for six months but i don't want it immediately if i don't need it just clean it up click next now the wss maintenance behavior so remove this one then click next and from the next screen like basically like keep this uh, default one click next update files so uh, i'm going to keep the default one just give me one second i just need to have uh... so click next now the classification. So I'm gonna do for the critical updates, definition update, and security update. Now click next. And it shows all products, Microsoft. And then from here, actually, um, Silverlight, SQL Server, Office, uh, a lot of updates you can select and also later on if you don't select it right now later on you can also come and select it um so what are you gonna do we're gonna do the windows 10 updates maybe windows 2016 updates like this and where's the windows defender Anything else? All right, so um, we, we, can, we can come back and we can do more like we can select later on. Click next. Language by default selected English. I want to keep this one and click next. And then next. Finish. So now Okay, so close, right? Okay, I just close it, right? So we already uh, integrated the uh, WSS with um, SCCM. And also we did the software update points setup, right? So now what are you gonna do? Uh, we're gonna check. Let's check, okay, let me minimize this one. We're gonna check the uh, logs for continue. So from the C drive, program files, configuration manager and logs. And so three things we're gonna check right now. The first one is uh, SCOP. Actually, we're gonna check this one, this log we're gonna check. So let me open this one through. One file. Tools, continue, CM trace. So open the CM trace as administrator. Okay. So now we're gonna do the tracing. Uh, I'm going to close it. And this window, I'm gonna leave it like here. So just put it like this. 
Dragon Bob is not working. Why is not working? Okay. So let's close this one. Reopen it again. File Explorer. And then uh, C drive, right? On the C drive, program files, configuration manager, and from the tools, if you go to the tools, and this one. And now just leave it here. Yes. So you do need to open as an administrator. Just regular double click on it, that's it. So now you can see here, installation was successful, right? So we check one, and then now we're gonna see WMC, sorry, WCM. So just drag and drop. Okay. So what is this? Working for change for 18 minutes. Okay, file notification trigger. Whoever is currently busy, synchronization update. There is a ton, uh, transition will be one minute. Okay. So let's open the WSAS. Okay. So basically, it started is here. The synchronization is started, which is good. And now we're gonna check WSAS this one. Okay. connection to the local server successfully connect to the local so it's successfully connected no change local versus proxy okay attempting to connect to the local check uh, database connection of WSS server this okay all right so we just need to wait until it's finished So synchronization actually takes long time. So without synchronization, I cannot like do any, I cannot do anything actually. So I have to wait, there's no alternatives. So after the synchronization, after the synchronization, what you can check here, um, software library, and then from the software library, all software updates, you're gonna see the update here. But right now it's not showing because you can check the monitoring and then software update point synchronization status. You see the status, everything is okay, but there's no, there's no status. The reason is we already checked through our WSAS here right? If you look at here, uh, expand it. You see synchronization is running. So synchronization is running, that's why. Okay, so Um, we have to wait here until it's finished. And I don't know when it's gonna be finished. Sometimes it takes one hour, more than one hour or two hour. So you have to wait because this is the first time, right? 
is trying, is trying to synchronize. So there is no alternative and I'm going to um, pause the recording and then I'll be back when it's done. All right, so it's still it's running. You see the synchronization is 36%, but you can see the uh, like um, updates here. So it's progressing, right? Like it's, it's already found um, 2,237 security updates, 324 critical updates. So unapproved updates, you see the numbers change. That means the WSO server is working. And also I want to mention one thing because I was super confused, like SCCM should be different server or different machine or SCCM roles should be on the primary side server. So it's highly recommended to set up, uh, to install the um, uh, WSS roles on the same server, which is on the primary side server. And also after installation, you don't need to do like the complete configuration. You don't need to do the complete configuration. So hopefully this synchronization, whenever this synchronization is done, then we'll be able to see the uh, security patch in our, on our um, SCCM software library. So if you click here, then you're gonna see it. But I, I have here something like if for some reason it's not showing. So I'll um, share these documents with uh, on the description box. I think I'm, like I'll be uploaded to my Google Drive because I struggle a lot to make this uh, document. So it's a step by step. If you just follow the documents, you don't need to watch the video also. You, you can just watch the um, like, so follow the documents, then you'll be able to do that. So I'm just going to show you. Um, okay, this is the one last one. So check all these logs and go to the monitoring and then from the upper pen click software update points, synchronous status, if you don't see it, now, if you want to re reconfigure software update points, then click on administration. Okay. Let me show you. So after synchronization is done, if you're not able to see this, then where you should go. That's what I'm just explaining. First and click administration and then click the site administration click the site and this is the site right select this site and then configure site components and go to the software update points if you are not able to see it software update points oh what happened okay it's opening From the properties window, click product and then select the Windows OS version, okay? Okay, here's the product. So if you miss any product, if you want to do, you see now you can see more product. Before it was only like few. So you see now 2019 is here. Before it was only 2016. And sometimes it's gonna start 2012. Right, so it's gonna load like after it's completing after complete the synchronization, it will load like everything. So now you can select 2019, um, and also you can do Windows 10, Windows 11. See, Windows 11 was not wasn't there before. Um, Windows 10, I already selected. And if you want, like for example, the version, different version, let me check. Win, Winbar, if you type Winbar, so it's in my laptop. 
So my laptop is uh, operating system uh, is Windows 10, and which build which is is it, the version is 22H2. 22H2. If I want to apply the patch to my laptop, then what which one is supposed to select? Okay. Build nineteen zero five. Okay, what if version twenty is two? Okay, so it's not loaded yet, but you're gonna see like this. You see, in general, you can download just Windows eleven and sixteen, just nineteen, or if you want to do the data center. Then you can select the data center the driver. If you want, you can do the driver. Um, so it's up to you. And also Windows Depender. I'm just looking for Windows Depender. I don't know where it is. So there is a lot of updates. It depends on if you want to uh, like system center updates, uh, SQL Server updates, uh, SQL 2019. So for example, you want SQL Server updates, right? Select so SQL Server 2019 because we have 2019. And if you want Silver Light or any other thing, any other updates, you can select it from here. So uh, still this one is synchronizing is just 37% done. And let's check when it started. So th this is the log actually I'm looking for. Anyway, uh, there is no alternative. You have to wait for it. But I only show you, right, like how many we found. So if you look at on the WSAS, 37%, and you see the number is going to increase. This number is going to be increased. So it's working. The only thing is just we have to wait until it's finished. So the post configuration, everything is ready. And next should be different video like which is administer ad, administering that means whenever you have a uh, software updates group then how you gonna um you, you can create a like separate as uh, some groups based on the updates you can create a groups and from the, from the groups you can deploy So I'll show you in a different video. Okay. So the driver you see here. So the GPU is applied. I just registered one machine and the GPU I applied to the GPU, the tools is already installed. So I just need to do the refresh. So I applied the GPU and I linked that GPU. It's the same client as in deployment. I linked that GPU on the top or like on the root level, like on the domain level. So it's going to be applied to all of the machines, including my domain controller and all others. So SSCM tools will be installed automatically. You don't need to do manually. So after one day, you're going to see like if all of them, whatever the machine is powered on, all of them automatically uh, the mm -hmm. because it's going to be a silent installation through the gpu so i just link the gpu and it, it gpu takes like um two hours to apply to all of the client machine and also installation takes time right so there's no alternative we have to wait <clears throat> and there's another manual process which is Actually, I don't like that process, but anyway, you can do that. You can just mu select multiple computers and right click on it. I'm just going to show you as an example. I'm not going to do that because I applied the GPU. I want to do it through the GPU, but I'm just going to show you multiple computers. Just select the computers, uh, press the control button and select the computers and do the install, uh, install client. Click next. And in here, don't do this one, install on, on domain controllers. 
and this one this one and also this one that's it and click next so if it is first time then you don't need this one if if you know like there is already installed but it's failed in that case you can do this one and next and then do it like this way this is a manual way it's automated plus manual way and gpu is completely autom automated completely automated because you just link the gpu and it's going to be applied and if you have any new machine in your environment automatically it's going to be automatically it's going to be added and okay Okay, I want to show you the discovery method. So the forest level discovery method. Okay. It was discovered on the forest level, group level, user level, and network discovery. Let's see what it is. Right click on it. So that means if any machine is not domain join, configure settings to discover resources of the network that you cannot find by using the other discovery method. Network discovery can search domain snmp devices or dscp server to find resources so enable network discovery and then subnet if you add here the subnet like for example 10.15.0. Um, it depends on your subnet right um zero and subnet mask is if it is like slash 24 then okay i add one then i'm going to add another one okay Okay, apply and okay. So what is gonna do, like I said, Active Directory Forest Discovery. And also I have a system discovery. That means if any machine I have under my forest, domain forest or through this one system discovery, if I have, my, based on my computer or you that this computer is under the domain so it's all about all these all things is related to the domain if any machine join the domain those machines or those com those computer objects will be discovered but if any machines or any devices is not with the domain and those devices not going to be discovered so in that case, you should set up this one, then all of them will be discovered. This discovery method is enough. So if you go to the asset and compliance, now you're gonna see more devices. Okay, you see here, SSM to be yes, yes. Now I see GPU is applying G through the GPU. Is applying okay you see here so so far we did all kind of post uh, configuration so now no software update is here because it's going to take time so i have to leave here um actually sscm wsas it takes a long time to get the updates so you have to keep in your mind for wsas at least you need two days and for sscm three four days to set it up completely it's a lot of steps, right? So for the administ ad 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 administration wise, like that, sorry, the installation wise, we are done. Um, so in the next, I will create another video, actually, uh, how are you going to deploy software, um, like third party tools, deployment, and how are you going to patch, how are you going to schedule it, 
how gonna create a software groups like a uh, patch how like how gonna make a bundle as a software groups uh, a software update groups and then from there how you're gonna deploy it so I'll show you step by step. And thank you, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.